Hey guys, this is Elliot. Before we get into this episode with For the Culture, I just want to let you guys know, about 10-15 minutes in, the audio kind of spurts out a little bit, but it's nothing too damaging. Um, we recovered it as best as we could, but you know, when, when it comes to recording over the internet, anything can happen. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the episode, and as always, please like, share, and subscribe with a friend. I'll tell you guys later. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the latest episode of Can I Kick? This is the host, as always, Elliot Barr. This joining me is my good man. Shanir Duran II. I was about to say, Shanir, if you could get your partner to come in, I was going to come get in my car <laughs> and come fight you. Because we've been over this. <laughs> you know your cue. Uh, I got my cue. I got my cue today. <laughs> <laughs> but joining us are two-thirds, well, really, two-fourths, of uh, for the culture, I'm gonna let them introduce yourself, Mr. Barricane and Tony Tone. How you doing, guys? Doing good, man. Thanks for having us on the show. Of course, I'm Tony Tone, half of the squad, or one fourth of the squad that's out here from for the culture. <laughs> Are we just doing prayer hands? My bad. I didn't get the. All right, we do prayer hands. My bad. <laughs> there we go. Go ahead, Mayor. And then right here, I'm. Uh, they call me Mayor, Mayor Kane. So uh, good to be here, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. And uh, I think this is going to be a special podcast because not only are we all United fans, and, you know, of course we won the Derby. You know, yes, the yes. city is red. Woo-hoo! It's red. <laughs> Real red. Always been red. <laughs> You're right. It does. has always been red. Always been red. <laughs> <laughs> but we are talking about probably the most prolific partnership in you not only United's history, but also EPL history. Of course, we're talking about Dwight York and Mr. Andy Cole. Yeah. First of all, guys, before we go into all the history and whatnot, lay everything out, I want to get your guys' own interpretation of what this partnership meant to you guys. You know, me, I'm not gonna lie, I'm an early United fan, so I wasn't around to watch it in his glorious days, but how was it for you guys that we're able to see it? What did it mean to you guys? Uh, I'll go ahead and, and start off first on that because uh, I think for me, I was right at the formidable age of when you become a fan of anybody. I was in high school uh, playing the game myself at that time, and I was, you know, specifically looking for players that looked like me and, you know, limited access to, you know, there was no YouTube. There was no internet, no social media back then. And so I was looking at, you know, 442 magazines and Soccer America and all those old magazines. And, you know, I saw Dwight York and Andy Cole in there and tearing up. And I found out, like, you know, Dwight York was from Trinidad. And you know, at the same time, I was a big Shocker Islam fan. So he was from Trinidad as well, too. And I was like, yo, like, okay, I'm going to start paying attention to these cats. And then, you know, as we'll dip into, you know, Trouble year of 99, but like, I mean, that right there, the fact that you got two brothers leading the, you know, the attack of, you know, arguably one of the best teams in the country, I mean, in the world at the time, I mean, like, that really was what cemented me being a fan of, you know, not only Manchester United, but, you know, that strike tandem. Definitely being able to go watch highlights of them is, I got to say, like, impressive. Like, Granted, I think we only what, got three good years of this partnership. There was course years of them at Blackburn Rovers, but we got like three solid years of this this trifecta. I mean, this partnership. And I mean, the thing about it is, like, of course, Andy Cole was the first one to join Man United. He came from Newcastle in '95, joined for seven million pounds, which at the time was the most expensive British signing ever. Can you like, yo? First of all, let's talk about that. Seven million? Like, I could yeah. go on FIFA. They buy like some crap <laughs> seventy rated player for like seventy million now. Like yo, you yo. get out of the academy for seven million. Like, <laughs> right, yo. Like, Home- homegrowns again seven million. <laughs> right. Like that's insane, yeah, that, man. That's- that that shows you how much times have changed, man. That, that have times have changed in terms of the sport, in terms of how big it's become. 
picking up where he left out, pretty much this man scored 93 times for Manchester United, 195 appearances over this time of United. Um, he was second all time in EPL scoring. Did not know that fact. Like, yeah, he had <laughs> record. I mean, like, you weren't seeing anything. I mean, the fact that Alan Shearer was second to that, like, for a while, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's significant. Yeah, like it's weird how like EPL historians would be like, "Oh, Alan Sherry scored the most goals," but yeah, then normally yeah. they'll bitch it second if they don't bitch Andy Cole at all. Oh, like yeah. they don't, they do not bitch that man. Um, but like how Andy Cole was described as striker and Dwight York, on the other hand, he came in from Atlanta. so I actually found out about his backstory, and this was like kind of cool to me. He was uh getting ready for I think the ninety, what was it, the ninety two World Cup with Trent. It was 92 one, yeah. 92. Or it was a 90. Was it a 91? I think it was 90, actually. I'm sorry, 90. 90? Yeah. He was 90. With, uh, he was 90. Aston Villa, right? Yeah, and Aston Villa yeah. came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they was torn in West Indies because, you know, England still thinks they control, like, all of Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica. Um, and they just happened to be training at the same place that um, it, uh, Dwight York was. The guy was like, pretty much, it was like the leading on Messi sign. Like, you're going to sign this napkin. You're going to become our player. And that's pretty much how it started. And then the Ashton Miller, like, he was played out of position. Like, he was played on the right wing. And then they realized, like, oh, snap, he's really good as a number nine. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's funny, like, back then, especially, like, when they had, you know, black attackers, a lot of times they wanted to put them on a the wing. So, like, same thing happened with Henri. He was put out of position, you know, on the wing as well, too. And you see, like, oh, let me try these dudes up top. And then all of a sudden, like, now we have these legends. And it's funny because there's still these, uh, you know, these uh, these biases that uh, people had as far as, like, you know, who should be at the top and, you know, the fast black players playing the wing and, you know, top you should have. It's more of a – it's almost kind of like a QB type of thing is how they saw it. Like, you know, you had to have, like, the mental capacity for it to be a striker at that level, especially because they were always playing 4-4-2s. Four, four you know, everybody yeah. was playing 4-4-2 four, four, back then. And so, so – So you mean to tell me it's almost like how the women's national team loves to put any black attacker at fullback? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Talk about counterproduction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Your best striker was playing fullback in the World Cup. <laughs> And still, and still, <laughs> and still, and still, yeah. it. and they know still this, and they know this. <laughs> of course, they and know still. This. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, back to the Dwight York man. So, like, like I said, he came from Aston Villa for twelve point six million, which you know the transfer fees is increasing. We start, we start <laughs> to get up there. We in double digits now. Y'all uh, right? But Eddie's, but at this time in United, he scored 47 goals in 95 appearances. He's ninth all time in EPL scoring. Which, once again, I got to see who's on this whole list because I feel like there's a lot of people that we have forgotten about in history. Like, I got to know where Henri ranks in this because I really thought, like, to see Andy Cole second, I, in my head, I thought Henri was like second. Ah, yeah. <laughs> ah. Ah, yeah. I'm I mean, that, that's the thing about it. like I, I think that you know that one season he had at Newcastle. I mean, in Newcastle, yeah. Cole had what? I want to say it was what 40, 40 something. Forty was it? Yeah, 42? Uh, 42, it was like forty two. Forty two. Yeah. Forty two. And you know, yeah. Granted, they played more games back then, but still, I mean, like you're not getting players that do that because of you know. Almost like the NBA hollers, you know, load management. Um, you know, two defenses are a little bit uh, more disciplined, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, because back then you just had a lot, of, you know, defenders who would just sell out and just, you know, they're going for all footed tackles type of thing, and all you had to do is whoop, you mind them, and they got that open space behind them. And, no and just blood, like no foul, baby. No blood, no <laughs> foul. <laughs> but you got that open, you got that open field after you get past that, you know, that sliding tackle, you good. And so that's why you had those breakaways and everything like that. Um so yeah, it, it it's remarkable that that tally count that he's got. And 
you know, and it's interesting, like today, I mean, I, I hate to jump the gun and talk about the tandem type thing, but, you know, today I think it was, um, you know, Harry Kane and, and Son just had, uh, you know, they just broke the record for the most, you know, combined goals or something like that. And oh, yeah, they uh, did. Like, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, to be honest with you, what one uh, partnership that reminded me fairly recently of, of York and Cole was when Suarez was at Liverpool with Sturridge. Mm. That was scary. Like it yeah. the the connection that they had, like it, it was like telepathic connection between the two of them. Yeah, they're they sharing a brain. <laughs> exactly. It, they, they always knew where each other were. And I was like, yo, this is like your this is like York and Cole, like all over again, except on the other side of Mercy side. Like <laughs> it was yeah. it, it was crazy. But that that was the closest thing that reminded me to that connection that York and Cole and the- had. The other United. crazy part about Cole and York's connection is there were their their game might have been different, like their approach. Like Cole was more of a, a north south type guy. He didn't really do too much after that. No, York was great with his feet, but there was no drastic dynamic. Like they were close to the what about the same height, same build. Usually you have like two different type of players, two type different type yeah. of style. Yeah, big man, that are up man. Front. But they were they were technically kind of the same body, and they were moving and always in the right place. And uh, it was just crazy to see that domination from those two those those type of guys as well. It's not. It's, <laughs> oh, so, go ahead, Kosani. Oh uh, no, it's just it's interesting that like you know, a few years back where I saw an interview. Um, they were saying like the reason why they felt like they had that like uh you know that one brain type of thing was um I think it was Cole had invited York over like to you know dinners and to hang out with his family and all that stuff and and never before were there other players doing that because at the same time you gotta remember they were competing for essentially the same spot because they were still only gonna social there. Teddy Sheringham was there too, you know, and then you got the two of them. So there's like four strikers on the same team. And for him to like, you know, invite them over to chill and like, you know, break bread and everything like that, that's when they started to get that like, you know, that camaraderie and just kind of like, yo, we brothers in this. I mean, I'm sure both being bl- brothers had a factor in that as well. <laughs> so they were like, yo, man, here we are. Here we are. He probably right. did. Yo, we got together, bro. <laughs> look, yeah, they, they it's basically, easy. yeah, they basically were saying, like, look, we gonna keep Ollie and sharing him on the bench because right. we gonna work it out here. Right, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. See, that was the thing originally because so we talked about it before the podcast. How Sir Allison, he didn't want York at first. Like York was not his first choice. The right. original first choice was Patrick Clavert. And in a famous meeting, Patrick Kyber pretty much started Alex Ferguson is like, you don't have the money to sign me. Nah. I don't want nah. to go. Nah. And so once Kyber went away, there was Botigo and Botigo. I think there was like a box transfer there. Like, yeah, apparently yeah. the money went to – he was at Florentina yeah, at the time, right? Like, was like, <laughs> yeah. It was a weird Italian transfer type stuff. And Matrix was like, all right, we're not doing this. Yeah. And then it comes to White York. And the crazy thing is, at the time, um, John Gregory pretty much said, and this is a wild statement, yo. Like, if he said what he said today, it would be all over the news. Pretty much he was like, I don't want him going to Old Trafford. If it was up to me, I would shoot him dead. Yes. And I'm like, yes, no. Yes, 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 2021. <laughs> no, you cannot. PR no. rep would have been like, hey, shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> it's over. Delete, delete that tweet. Delete that tweet. <laughs> There's a little men in black thing. Just is that <laughs> right? Forget yeah, listen, we said it. <laughs> PR Brett would have walked up there as soon as he said they took the mic. Hey, this press conference over. We done. No, <laughs> pull that cord. <laughs> Absolutely, you can't, you can't say that. Oh, that man. Man. No, man, you can't, yo, you can't. But <laughs> so, like, for real, for real, that. So August 98, York is there. And things didn't even start off at first. Like York was on the bench. It was he was really trying to get Cole and Sherry together, but them two, whoo, 
They got some oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Those were the years rich. that I was watching was... like this. <laughs> and the thing was, Those, though, it was never no like racist them. beef. It was always like I just don't like you. your personality. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. It, Wasn't there it like was a, it was a misunderstanding? Like somebody, like maybe Cole said something, and it just was it was there sort of like a misunderstanding I, with that? I know they squashed it a few years ago. They, yes. Didn't they squash it? Me? Yeah, yeah, they squashed yeah, it a few years did. ago. But I think it all stemmed from like the England cap, where Terry Gibb was getting subbed off for Cole, yeah, yeah, they, and Cole tried to oh. dab him up, and Sherry just walked past him. And Cole he was didn't dab him at all. Yeah, <laughs> fifteen years. Yeah. That's a long time Damn. to hate somebody, man. Damn. <laughs> and then you had the baby faces only going to show so I was just standing there like, hey, guys, we're going to coach the team in 20 years. <laughs> it it would have been funny, though, if Cole would have had, like, his Jamaican blood come out of him, like, get off the field, man. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Me go on tour, man. Yo. Was it me? Did, he, did he try to hide that Jamaican accent a lot? He did. He did. And I mean, I've I've caught that a lot in a lot of those black English players that obviously are Jamaican. Yeah. But yep. sometimes you hear it come out. Like I've heard it come out with Daniel Sturridge before. I've yep. heard it come out with Ian Wright. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> they drop that tea and crump and they pick up that that, that beef patty and cocoa bread real quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jeez, the age is dread. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, so like, their partnership took forever to start up, Cole and York, but it really took off. I want to say Southampton, 98. Where both of them got on the score sheet, like yo, I think York assisted Cole and Cole assisted yeah, York. Both, yeah. And ever since then, if ever since then, Fergie was like, all right, y'all gonna start because Oli was injured and Sheridan was Sheridan was old. Let's be real. He, he yeah, was a little funny. Ever since then it started and then like the real big day, like the turning point here, because Gary Neville did like an interview. I don't know how Gary Neville became like the voice of like the 99 team. Like he's he, yo, you know who Gary Neville reminds me of? Nobody likes him. Me of, <laughs> bro, Gary Neville truly reminds me of Kevin Garnett and like this Boston Celtics team. Like, that's the only like time of year you think of him. The turning point was when they scored five goals between York and Cole in what was like a 6 2 win over Leicester City. And Ferguson was like, oh, yeah, y- y'all start for the rest of the year. Nasty. Yeah, hey. absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. I mean, but, I mean, you know, <laughs> real recognize real. I mean, Fergie said, "I'm not gonna mess with a good thing. I'm gonna let it, let it ride out. If it work, if it bro- if it ain't broke, don't fix it." <laughs> no, not at all. And like for real, for real, the best highlight between the two of them was against Barcelona in the Champions League, where yeah. pretty much they destroyed the entire defense with like what was it, three one one twos? Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. And like, oh. look, as a defender, that last defender dog, I felt so bad for him because y'all ever seen a defender just glitch out and he just gets stuck and he don't know what to do with his legs? <laughs> the legs just freeze up. I, that man just stood there, yo. He just stood there, and was like, I, I, "All right," <laughs> like just didn't know what, what to do. You? I mean, at the end of the day, when you see when you see like two, three of your boys get cooked by those passes, and you next, you're like, "Well, I mean, your knees are already shaking." <laughs> exactly. you know, we we forgot we forgot a part of this this drama that was actually pretty pivotal in this chemistry and this partnership happening because it also couldn't have happened because you gotta remember, Canton was there too. And then oh, yeah. he retired. Yeah. He retired. He did. And he retired, he retired right, right, right up. And, and that, woo, talk about if, if he had stayed, man. We might not like, be having this pot if he stayed. We would not be having this conversation. <laughs> no. Because and this is another thing, point. too. That's a big point. That is, that is a great point. And it's another thing, too. Like, Cole almost got, well, NBA terms, traded for York. Right. But then. Ferguson was like, no, nah, we're keeping him. We're just going to pay you an extra $5 million. 
that's that's a very good about Cantona. Because if Cantona stays, man, like woo, you gotta play Cantona. That's the thing about it. you gotta play. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, but, but then also like you, you that ninety nine travel doesn't happen. Yep, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. That ninety nine travel doesn't happen. But you, another another you know through the looking glass situation we can look at is there's heavy rotation that Fergie always uses. He always rotates his players, and that's how he was able to keep things fresh to be able to win a treble. Can you imagine if there was a game where he decided to play York and Cole, even though he still had Cantona, to maybe rest Cantona and see that yeah. chemistry? We probably would have been seeing 4-3-3 a lot sooner than we thought. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That would that's have been true. a front three right there. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be nasty oh that would have been sick that would have been unfair like because but i mean when you think about it i think it, it was just a perfect storm um kenton and cole was just the perfect storm it was just that situation where you know the it was basically the silver lining it was like i didn't get this guy i didn't get this guy i'm gonna have to settle for this one while he matches perfectly and th- just to have that situation happen, that that shows the the good the just the luck that Fergie had, and also shows that once he realized it was a good thing, he was like, "I'm sticking with this no matter what." And for and with you bringing up the situation of of Cole and York actually off the pitch developing a chemistry, I mean, you like you said, you don't see that. You don't no. see players do that that much nowadays. Like hanging out together. I mean. You'll see maybe a little bit of it, like, yeah, after the game, we're going to go have a drink together and hang out and chill and maybe, you know, in the locker room, hang out. But you, it also does tie into a lot of the more successful national teams is yeah. because of look at, for example, the Brazil national team back in 02, like you see them like in the locker room having like samba parties <laughs> like you could see that there was a chemistry there was a, a connection and that connection off the pitch translate on the pitch and i think york and cole really captured that early on and were able to to capitalize on it more than anyone else did kind of well, they capitalized the on it yeah, right they capitalized on it to the point of 101 goals between them in 2 years like, like all this. Oh yeah! By the way, they also won the treble <laughs> in the midst of those two years. <laughs> and, and what's crazy about it is like, you know, we always think. Of, I mean, as Manchester fans, you always think about that night against Bayern Munich in the actual Champions League final. And you know, obviously, you know, the super sub of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You know, he's written into the canons of Manchester folklore. But uh, I mean. People forget too that like Bayern Munich was going up for the treble that year too, uh, yeah. on the German side of things too, and so yeah. you know here you got these two titans going after it, and you know it goes to the last minute, last second type of thing. I mean like the folklore of that '99 squad and just like the fact that you know York and Cole, I still don't think they get the full praise that they deserve in the yeah. months well, I, the whole I mean, you're all, community you're always yeah. gonna get the sound bite moment the that that final game but you know the true the true you know diehards they know that there wouldn't have been a baby face assassin if you colin york didn't get them to that final right you know? right so my thing was Neither one of them was on the field for those final two goals, were they? Nah, I don't think they were. I don't think they were. Uh-uh. Um, that's insane. That's insane. That's crazy. We also need to talk about a very important thing about that that era of, you know, uh, Cole and York. That's when popping collars was just like the thing to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, everybody stay with a fr- yo. That collar was hard. It's that collar was hard, man. <laughs> that collar was hard. Yo, they need they need to bring that back. They need to bring Here's, that back. I mean, yeah. it forever 
it that I mean, to this day, like whenever I, I mean I'm retired from playing now, but whenever I get back on those pitch and you know, Shy would tell you like I'm always trying to pop my collar when I'm in goal, man. And, and oh, it's just that generation it just mm-hmm. stuck with you. It's just like you gotta have I mean, like, yeah, people look down upon in, in you know regular day-to-day society, but when you're on that field, man, that's just like a whole different swag that you have. I don't yep. care what decade it is. I'm still going to pop that collar on the That collar's like a cape, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. It makes you feel invincible. It gives you that. I mean, not only it was, you know, York did it, Cole did it, Ian Wright did it. Canton, I mean, you know. Canton yeah. had the collar pop 24-7. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, Ian Wright had a, had a pop collar and gold too. <laughs> yeah, that ain't the blackest thing I've ever seen, man. <laughs> Yo, I saw that photo. I was like, this man really got a gold too and a pop collar. Yes. They did. Uh, why don't they do like those today in Black History? Ian Wright stepped on the field with a gold tooth and pop collar. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, that that day, bro. <laughs> Yo, you need to have like. A tear, <laughs> and then like a little kid with the baseball hat doing the respect. <laughs> you know it's a legendary stuff, man. That was legendary, yo. Because yeah. you know EPL was like, "Hey, we got to do a drug test." <laughs> Ain't, no <way. laughs> Ain't no way. Ain't no Is way. Yipping after the game, you know. <laughs> they would have called that man and be like, "Hey, sir, we need you to come with us." <laughs> come on. It's, Ian Ray, 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 play. it's the code two, sir. It's the code two. <laughs> no, but like we said Ray. earlier, man, this partnership didn't even last long. Like Ferguson, I don't know what it was, but Ferguson was always like, mm, I'm getting tired of this. I gotta change it up a little bit. But he said ahead of the curve. Like at the time, it was like seemed to, to his detriment, but you know, Hans is always 2020. We had the curve, so I guess he kind of already knew. Like that's third year, I think they only scored eighteen goals beside him, but he was already like, "All right, I gotta cut them loose." And the thing was, they were thirty. Like, like yo, you had Piscavati, who's thirty-four year old now at United. <laughs> you had Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic, he was like what seventy. No, United scored goals. No, Ibrahimovic is gonna be playing. Playing at 45. I, I, I'm telling you, that man is made of something else. He's gonna be playing at 45. <laughs> yeah. They were they were kind of, I guess, expecting, I don't know, Cole to, to keep up the production, like bring over those Newcastle numbers and, and keep it going. I mean, it might have hit a, a blip, but you're right. 30? That's yeah, 30 to cut that man loose. So Cole left. Cole left that summer. <clears throat> And went to uh, Blackburn. York stayed around for another six months. Joined him at Blackburn. I mean, joining him the next year at Blackburn Rovers. And the crazy thing about that too, they kind of was scoring like what thirty goals between them that first year at Blackburn. And then 07, they went to Sunderland together. And guess who was the manager at Sunderland? Anyone want to take a guess? He's an old grumpy Irishman. Oh, Roy. Oh, boy. King. Oh, man. Yeah, Roy. Yep. Roy. It was King. Man. <laughs> it was a man, Good King. Old Roy. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're all teammate. Right. But Cole didn't even stay there that long. Cole was like, he left to go to Barnsley in the summer. And, yo, that's the one thing about Barnsley Cole. I mean, not Barnsley. Ashley Cole. Ashley Cole's career path is the true definition of a black man that stays for the job. Yeah. <laughs> that man hopped clubs like he want nobody business, and I don't blame him. Like, go get your money if they're gonna pay you, go. Yeah, I mean, you. It, it, it's funny because I think he he cracked the code then because once you hit the two thousands, you're hard pressed to find a one club player, and the reason is because your price tag and salary goes up quicker the more clubs you change than if you stay with the same club so like for example if i were to play at manchester united for like 10 years my 
let's 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 just say I started out playing at Manchester United, getting paid maybe ten thousand dollars a week. By the time that ten years is up, I'm may, maybe at eighty, maybe at ninety. But if I do two years at United, three years at Bayern, another two years at Arsenal, and like by the time I reach my tenth year, I'm getting paid two hundred thousand. Because as you change club, your price tag goes up higher. So you look at Andy Cole. I think he, he basically cracked the code. He realized, look, at the end of the day, I keep changing club. They're going to have to pay me more. Because, I mean, your, your salary is going to go up slower if you stay with the same club. The same way if you're working, your salary is going to go up slower if you stay with the same company. But if you keep changing company, your salary is going to go up a lot quicker. So... <laughs> And no, it's Cole, like I mean, Kobe, make, Kobe Bryant making that argument when he was re-signing at one point. And he was like, pay me for what I've done, not for what I'm going to do. Pay me already for all the stuff that I've accomplished already. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, that's a that's a good point about Cole because I don't know. He he it seems like he played for the whole EPL. <laughs> even <laughs> even City. Yep. Even City. He did, and, man. And and people, a lot of people, uh, you know, are upset about that. Like, how could you go to City? You're you're a United player, and I think his mentality was just, "Hey, this is my job. I'm a footballer, as anyone should. Like, you should be able to play wherever you want to play. It doesn't, you know, what I'm saying, matter that you're playing for a rival of a former employer or team of yours. You know, mm -hmm. so he got it." That's all I gotta say. Yeah. He was getting it. Get that money. <laughs> he got his money. He got his money. So let me have five. I think this pretty much wraps up the white. <laughs> <laughs> I think this pretty much wraps up uh, the white coal and New York's great partnership in Manchester United. You know, it's definitely one that you, you should definitely get white coal and New York. <laughs> I definitely did. I don't know why I keep wanting to mix their names up. <laughs> why? They, they won the one in the same, dude. They won in the same. See, that's how great they were. Look, two peas <laughs> in a pod, man. Two peas in a pod. Dang. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. This they is also saying up. that all black people look alike. This is a great way of saying that we all don't look alike. So the white coat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh? Depending, depending on where you at, you know, there are, there are many people who think I look like Rashad. We got, hom we got homies here in Atlanta that... So TK, we got a shout out to uh, to Stanley. Like you know, we're, we're like trust me. Depending on where you're at, we all look alike. We all yeah, alike. I got to shave this off, but they think we all alike. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Um, hey, that's why we call the, the podcast Tony in the Darkies. That's why we just see. <laughs> see. <laughs> well, well, tell them that, man. <laughs> Uh, and people, that great oh, voice wow. that you hear right there is the one and only Grado. Man, listen. Um, can I tell y'all something real quick? Because you know that, that we're, you know down here allegedly it's it's, it's All Star Weekend. Because can't nobody go to the game. Uh, the people definitely showed up in the city, and I need y'all to get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yo, y'all like, out there? Nah, like, bro, like we've been doing so good since since uh, since COVID. Traffic's been smooth. People can actually go to work that that do have to go into the office, and like this weekend, everybody and their mama and their two cousins, their two favorite cousins, decided to come here to Atlanta, and we're not with that shit. You know, I, I'm I'm not from Atlanta. But I feel like this is like my first week in where I could just tell people I, I'm fr I'm from here. Y'all need to get the fuck out. <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> get off my lawn. Get off my highway. Out of here. Get step. Step. And Martin used to say step. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta we gotta organize Yo. a community cleanup now. <laughs> oh, it's oh, dirty, man. Oh, it's oh, oh. dirty. Trust y'all, y'all, y'all want to hear like how how much, uh, like how 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 much dirtiness. Like we got we got to scrub the whole city after all this. Like it's it's just so 
dirty and just bloody. And like I said, it, you guys, hey, y'all out down there killing people on the highway, man. What's going on down in Atlanta? That ain't us. That that ain't us. Ain't us. Like I said, everybody, every week, mama, everybody, every and week. Their mama, and 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 their two favorite cousins came down here and they brought their shenanigans down with them. And we did we didn't know about you know Ray Ray, you know cheating on 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 his uh, girlfriend with with his with his two favorite uh, sisters like nah, we didn't know all that we didn't know all that drama we we didn't bring that drama here we, we just been chilling we didn't ask and, for it nope. but yeah man like I, I i tried to get here sooner but you know tra- you know traffic man it's just it's, it's it, I, I missed the whole conversation what's good man now, I must man, for those listeners are wondering, like, while we stop talking about Dwight and Andy, it's pretty much it's a crossover episode with our favorite guys to follow the culture. So, Greg, for you just coming on, we just got finished talking about Dwight and Andy, you know, the great partnership that they had at Manchester United and how the EPL would like to tell you about them, but you only really hear about them for like one year and not their importance that they had not only on the culture, but, you know, Manchester United as a whole. I mean, if, if not if nothing else, I think that the fact that you you that it had that season with two black men leading the way up front that hey no matter no matter what happened any other season we got that one. and yes and uh, nobody else in England's done it yet so hey I'll take that I'll take that shit and run with it yeah got to man. Like I think the the dopest thing about that partnership is not only was it two black men, but it was like York was like a hundred percent like no, I am Trinidadian. Like no, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm no yeah. Tobago, I'm Tobago, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get no more like backwoods Caribbean in Tobago. Like yeah. that's true, true Caribbean right there. Yeah, he was like, because I, I think it was an interview in like the 90s or something, and they were asking with the prospect of like, do you wish you have get, you know, play for England and stuff like that? He was like, no, I play for my national team. I play for this. But he also said like, he knew he wasn't going to win a World Cup with Trinidad and Tobago, and that kind of fueled him. He was like, all right, I can't win a World Cup. So let me go for the best next day, and that's getting into trouble. I mean, getting a UEFA Champions League, and that's what happened in his move to Manchester United. It's, so. it's it's inter- it's interesting now because you have basically like a like a project with uh, Jamaica with their national team where you're they're looking for those players in England who have that dual uh, dual national um, status uh, with England and with Jamaica and trying to say hey we're trying to get everybody that's that's over there you know back to the motherland back to Jamaica and play for the um, for the national team which honestly all this considered I I say go for it because. I think for, I think for a lot a lot of players, they even if they did grow up in England, I, I think that especially there, do you you have that sense of of heritage and where your parents or grandparents probably come from, and so that culture is isn't lost on them, and you know not everybody can can play for England, and I think not everybody you know is meant to play for England, and. If they if they still have an opportunity where they can play international ball, I say go for it. Like, I I think that that's a, that that is, that is just a part of you as whatever English side that you you uh, claim. Just like how we have players from all over the place that um that, that everybody does. Was, Every country yeah. does. I mean, all the top fifty countries do that. So it's like, why not? Yeah, I will say this. I mean, a lot of things have to work out, like countries like Jamaica, the Caras House, Trinidad, and Tobago. But if people in like Germany, France, England decided, like, you know what, I'm probably not going to make it into those national teams. Let me go to like Jamaica, Trinidad, and Tobago, you know, Marquette. I mean, not Marquette. Yeah. Yo, I'm telling you, it will be very difficult for like to qualify to CONCACAF. <laughs> like, it wouldn't be a cakewalk for U.S. Yeah, Mexico. Right, yeah. like, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I said it, you know, for years. Uh, like, if, if everyone went back to play for their country, the World Cup would be won by probably Senegal, Ivory Coast, Jamaica, and Trinidad. 
and I mean, shit, <laughs> we, we, we saw what happened with the uh, with the France team back in 2018. I think like over like two thirds of their team got African roots. Yep. So it's and it's like if you if if those players went back to you know like their 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 countries of origin where their parents and grandparents came from, France would be look so much differently and. And mind, yeah. like, mind you, like we said before, these are players who grew up in those countries, but again, they, they have that heritage. So it's not like, you know, that can't play for them. It's just, you know, they end up playing for what they know and, and and their home countries end up catching them sooner. So like even like like guys like Mbappe and and Pogba, you uh it just a matter of France caught them sooner and they said, Hell, oh, we're not missing that on those. So it is what it is. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I mean, you also have to take into consideration a lot of these players are chasing the glory as well. I mean, if you look at someone like, for example, Pogba, who's he going to win a World Cup with, France or Mali? Or, um, wait, <laughs> is Pogba from Mali? Can't remember exactly. No, uh, I think he's from Congo, if I'm not mistaken. No, his brother is playing for uh, Guinea, Guinea, Guinea. Guinea, yeah. his yeah. brother plays for Guinea. Like, yeah, yeah, so basically, bro. Guinea, <laughs> Guinea, Guinea is. <laughs> Guinea is not winning an African Cup of Nations or a World Cup. So who's who do I have a better chance of be having that success with? Oh, so and... I shouldn't place that bet. Damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I mean, no, nah, like He's I think scary. Raheem Sterling yeah. said it best where he was just like, you know, when it came down to choose what national he wanted to play for, he was like, I have to take everything in consideration. I'm gonna make more money be if I have England International. If it's one cap or fifty caps, then I am. If it's gonna have Jamaican International beside my name, and of course, like he plays in England. Like if he's an England International, that's an extra ten to fifteen million dollars to that transfer fee for him. Like, yep. You know how many times we hear in the EPL of like, oh, he's an English International, extra five million, like, you know. Yeah, you got. Or you also gotta remember how those uh. Those federations treat them while they're in their youth stage too. That's the key thing. If they yeah. if they treat them well during their youth years, theoretically they should be good. But as yeah, we've seen here in the states, the states don't take care of them in their youth years and see what happens. They they go to Mexico. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the dudes. I mean, you saw you're starting to see that. I think USA has learned their lessons with that. You you can see that with players right. like Pul- Pulisic, players like um, Sergino Dest. Uh, you know, players like that who could, had the choice of, I mean, in another world, Christian Pulisic could be playing alongside Modric in right. Croatia, you know, mm-hmm. and, and Sergio Dest could be playing for the Netherlands. And that's, that. It, it, I mean, it, it just goes to show that it, it, it's a, you you got to think long term. And I think the United States is finally getting that picture that you have to to think long term, you got to think for the long haul. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, look, we got a lot of talent, and look, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a big up my boy McKenney out there at Juve, man. When he went to Juve, I thought he was gonna be sitting on the bench. Yes, when Guardian Leviosa, man. <laughs> there you go. Hey, right. We said it on last week's show. If, if, with if, that. If, with it, man. if if that doesn't end up. Uh, a celebration in FIFA 22. It needs to be, what man. What are we doing? What are we it doing? Needs to be. Look, if it isn't the celebration right. FIFA 22, I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo. 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 I love Wesley McKinney so much because he is like a black nerd that has like great exactly. athlete. Love it is great. great. He is. He's a uh, look. Yo. <laughs> I love no, it. I think he, did like, um, what was it? he was doing an interview with like UVTV.com or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, in the background, he had like the Goku poster, like the Harry Potter poster. I was like, yo, this kid is a black nerd. And I love it. Yes. <laughs> and I love it. Yes. Oh, man. All right. So, Greg, you know the thing. The fifth thing for the culture does two up, two downs. I'm going to toss it over to you, man. So, you can uh, lead us in that direction, my good man. Oh yeah, yeah. For those of you on Can I Kick It that, that aren't totally aware of what we do, first of all, you need to be listening to us. Uh, of course, we uh, we come out on on uh, every single podcast app that you could probably think of, man. Um, and 
what we do as we wrap up each episode, we do two up to now. Basically, you know, we give shout outs to two good things that are going on in the culture, two things that aren't so well in the culture. And uh, yeah, definitely, so we can um, go into that real quick. Uh, Tony, you good? Let's do, yeah, this. Good, Let's do this. All right. Um, I'm actually going to do uh, two ups, one down. All right. So uh, two ups I got going on for me. Uh, first thing is, if anybody, you know, I know there's some crossover appeal and some listeners listen to both maybe or whatever, but last week I spoke about my mom's being hospitalized. She had a heart attack and everything. Um, wasn't cool, but now she's discharged. She's good. She sounds like herself. And I was on the phone with her today, and she was back to regular nagging mom ways. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> so well, I'm fine. I'm I'm like, fine. Leave right. me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, all right, all right, mom. Okay, uh, okay, mom. Uh, okay, all right. You know when the hang up lasts for like five minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, that's that was good to you know. It was good to have that interaction with her today. So uh, that's definitely a good. The second good I got going on for me too up uh, is uh, this past weekend was my daughter's second attempt at playing the game of footy uh, soccer this weekend. And uh, she had a first practicing game and uh, she what jumped in. Uh, you want to know the team she's playing, bro? What's up? What's up? She's playing for the Galaxy, man. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hold in that big, that big designated player money for her, man. She, 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 uh, don't, yeah, she don't play for this anybody. Yeah. She don't play for this anybody. Hey, but I'm all in. You know what I'm saying? Hey, just like, just like we were talking about with Cole. You know what I'm saying? Galaxy's paying her the money. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so you need to tell me episode 100. We're gonna be doing an episode on Memphis. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All right, all right. We get ready for it. We'll get ready for it. Hey, but hey, but the other thing I want to say, she jumped in goal. Uh, she got between the sticks and she took on her father's uh legacy, and she did get like a legit save this weekend. Like she dove at the, the at the ball right at the kid's feet and everything. I was like, What? So I gotta ask, did you have like that black dad moment? You was like, hell yeah, that's no, yeah. <laughs> and the thing about it, you know, her mom, her mom's a soccer player too, and she played in the field, and she's like, she does not want our daughter to play goalie at all. And so <laughs> no, no, nah, the parents, the the goalkeeper parents are the, the nervous wrecks on the bench. Oh I've, I've ex- we're the worst. Every and the thing about it, she didn't even think about it. Like we didn't have to say anything. She just innately did it. Like so she's she been here before. Like she she know where she know where she belongs. Might be in her blood. Might be in her blood. Look, but um, like I always say play the goal, yo. No blood, no foul. Is that- <laughs> no blood, no foul. <laughs> like, ain't gonna lie, yo. And, and, and think about it, she was like, uh, I was like, baby, so what did you um how'd you feel out there and everything? And she was like, I like playing rough. And I was like, Okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and you know, yo, she just went for that corner kick when she got the right to actually punch somebody. <laughs> yo, so quick story, real quick. Like my high school soccer coach, yo, I swear he knew he had hood people on the team because he was like, "Look, if you play in goal, you literally can punch somebody on the corner." You we punch, was all like, "You can he punch was like, "What?" And get away like, with it. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> bet." First corner kick, no, I slide you down. I cold cock one kid in the face. Yeah. And the ref was I like, mean, you play on. I, was like, oh. I, I, I used to tell goalkeepers that when I was training. I was like, hey, when you go for a punch, you know, sometimes you can sneak in a real punch, you know? So, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, my only down is superficial. But uh, as y'all can see, I'm a Michigan fan. Wait, wait. There we go. Yeah. Man, what the hell is that other scarf behind you? <laughs> See, see, see. <laughs> Y'all falling for that trap? Y'all falling for that trap? Hold on, I, I, I got, I got both. I got both. I got. <laughs> and I got all over, over here. You only need one on this podcast, sir. Hey man, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, just like I, I said about Galaxy sending my daughter money. Hey, Featherstone sent me. Money. <laughs> 
I swear, dog. Uh-huh. Ford Madison is about the whole black community and more, man. <laughs> yup, they basically did. <laughs> you the only two black people that ain't been touched by Ford Madison, dog. Me and Shadir, the only two they ain't been touched by them. We're so happy for it. I'm sorry, man. Hey, it's just like, hey, Uncle Pepsi. Hey, it's whoever paid me last. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pele. <laughs> All right, now, nah, but I'm a Michigan fan. Michigan took them hot two L's this week, so uh, we lost a little bit of momentum going into the tournament. So uh, that's really my only L or down. I gotta say, I'm, I'm all right with that, though. You know, we good. We got that out of the way. So that's my two up, one down. Schneer, you want to give this a shot? All right. Um, let's see. I'm a. Uh, I'm gonna do two up, one down as well. Um. First up, I would say like this. This is this weekend ended good because uh, this was my my wife's birthday weekend. Her birthday was on Friday, so everything oh, went well yeah. with all of the plans for the birthday. So, so you know what they say: happy wife, happy life. <laughs> um, uh, to go kind of in order to for things to make sense, I'm gonna go with my down and then go with my second up. Um. My down is um, the dog that me and my wife had for 11 years a couple weeks ago passed away. Oh, um, it was it was tough. 11 years old, um, and she died in my arms, and it was it was it was brutal. Uh, mm. But the second up is we got ourselves a new little fur baby. He uh, little he's nine weeks old right now, and. He actually is able to keep up with my son because he's a much bigger dog than our previous dog was. Um, as a puppy right now, he's like three times the size of our dog was full grown. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's my two ups and one down. Mayor, first of all, I'm going to need you to get with the NBA and get the city together because yeah but uh what you got speaking of the nba being that the all-star game is here this weekend in uh atlanta uh one thing that they're emphasizing that um i'm a big fan of is that the entire game is wrapped around the hbcu so from the, the, the paint on the court all of the uh, the pictures and graphics on the court itself uh, to the intros. They had Grambling State and FAMU uh, doing the intros for each team. Uh, all of the referees that are officiating the game are HBCU graduates. Um, the, every every player that's graduated from an HBCU, they've allowed them to wear um, warm ups or jerseys or, or anything from their school that they graduated from. So. It's all about raising uh, scholarships. They've been awarded scholarships to students, um, giving back to the community, raising more awareness about HBCUs. And then throughout the game, they have a rolling scroll of just names of just all the HBCUs out there. So shout out to the NBA for taking that step uh, to highlight and recognize our HBCUs. And while I'm on HBCUs, my second up will be some other local news about uh, our dear Morris Brown College here. So uh, I think some alumni got together um, that are in the hospitality world and uh, they're bridging the gap with the institution and Hilton to raise, uh, to start this program, this $30 million program that's gonna be this training program to elevate people, I believe, into the hospitality industry, ownership, um, management, things of that nature. So um, shout out to Morris Brown College as they make their resurgence and come back um, and do their thing. So on the downside, though, I just want to reiterate what we've already said about this dang All-Star game. Get these people out of my city, please. 
we got to clean up. We got to reset. Um, the and only reason is is already at capacity. We're at capacity already. We're over capacity for for right now. For the game to not have fans, we're we're like we've had, we've passed our limit. But the good the thing about why we why, why we're even at this point is because NBA TV Turner all that stuff is down the street from the arena. So they were trying to be COVID responsible by limiting the travel of all of the production from not leaving the city, but yet everybody else was like, all right, well, we come into the city. So yeah, that's my down. Cause, uh, but yeah, that's it for me. Uh, my dear Yogi, what you got? Yo, I just remembered that it's all-star weekend and the dunk contest is going on. And I'm so caught off guard. I'm like, why are they doing the dunk contest in the middle of the yeah, game? Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I've been watching that <laughs> for y'all's uh, updates. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, it is. Mm. Mm. Yeah, man. My uh, two ups, two downs. Uh, one up. I just finished applying for grad school at the Virginia State University. Uh, going back to get my master's in special education, so was spending more money to make more money. It's not fun. Um, my yeah. second up is we about to get another stimmy check, baby. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> the get all your horns for- up in that one. <laughs> Never should have gave y'all money. Never should have gave y'all money. <laughs> hey, look, for all these uh podcast sites that turned out can I kick it a year ago, the price just went up another 20 mil, baby. We going up. We going up. The prices them, went up. Let them know. Let them know. Price look, I got people in my DMs like, hey, can, you, can we have Can I Kick It on our podcast host? The prices yeah, price went up. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no. The prices went up. Oh, um, one doubt I have is I got to say, man, the, H, the HBCU court that uh, the NBA did, it was a little lackluster for me. I felt like it wasn't anything too special. Just the court I'm talking about. The yeah, court yeah. wasn't anything too special. You know, it just looked like an average, you know, college court. I would have seen them be able to put, like, you know, the logos of some of these HBCUs on there. That would have been my thing. Or, like, the actual jerseys. Like, have each jersey in the color of HBCU. That would have been That's what I thought they were going to do. I would, it would have been dope if, like, the players actually wore, like, the actual jerseys from the school or something like that, you know. I, yeah, they put was a missing cool name on each jersey, you know. Yeah, I tell you what they were missing. Um, they had like because like in that court design, they had like <clears throat> none, no divine nine um logos, no alphas, no delta. Hey, no, that cost me, man. Hey, hey. NBA paying that money. It, the NBA got it. Do you know what a divine nine would charge the NBA? <laughs> yeah. what? Look, the break just went a, up. Do you know right. how much it costs to cross? Like, <laughs> bro, it costs two G to cross. Do you know Alpha would have charged like a couple of racks? Oh, you bro, want us in the court? Oh, oh y'all want to put us in the logo? Y- y'all want to put us in the court? Price the break just went they up. Would've ple- they would have pledged. They would have pledged. They would have pledged the NBA. They were like, nah, yeah. you got to cross the sands, yo. You got to cross One the sands. Hey, you either LeBron or y'all just become an Alpha. One of them. I mean, shit. One of them got to be an Alpha. If uh, if if Jordan and the NBA already playing like a like a hundred some thousand to the black community, whatever that whatever that specifically means, I have no idea. But yeah, go ahead, run that, run that check, run that check, Yo, run that stimmy. Can we take a moment just to talk about that? What is this black community they always talking hate, about? Because every time they say it, I never know what they're so talking about. Vague. Like, it I hate that no shit. Sense. I'm like, you, who who are you referring to? Like, like, like I'm the black, black community, community is an organization. I am the black community. Go ahead, just run that shit over to me. <laughs> I always say, hey, I'm part of United Negro College Fund. Like, I'm always trying to either finish college or get my child in college. So, last I checked, I'm considered a Negro. So, go ahead and uh, you know, Burn my p- <laughs> <laughs> every time they say this, man, we're we're giving twenty thousand dollars back to the black community, and I'm looking at like. Which who? Because I don't see that a penny. Right. That twenty thousand could have been the turkeys for Thanksgiving. Just like Nino Brown, like Nino Brown. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, 
they they always do that. Like it's it's not just tonight. It's like they they do it all the time. It's like, what exactly do you mean by a black community? It's like that could be anything. They could be like, hey, I'm just gonna go ahead and just make this a tax write off, and y'all never see this money and like that like that kind of stuff. Just it always just blows me. But like I said, like it is is. I will take the shout out from the NBA for what they are doing. Just know that, yeah, you, let's be more specific next time. And and next time y'all want to do an All Star game with nobody there, don't bring that shit to Atlanta. <laughs> but, the only uh, thing specific was the scholarships because we saw the people that got it. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, yeah. yeah. who the community? <laughs> who is it? What is it? And ask y'all this: Y'all think the NFL going to do this? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Not on your life. NFL was like, we gave y'all black people enough. We made y'all quarterbacks. That's all you get. <laughs> you want to be man. owners and whatnot. You ain't getting that here. <laughs> but I was rolling over in this grave. Be, be, be happy that you're that you're that the highest paid player is black. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you want us to start paying attention to HBCUs? Better be happy we ain't make them black boy Yo, kickers. If you know <laughs> the commenters. They're so awkward when they say HBCU. They don't even know if that's politically correct. <laughs> They're like, uh, HBCUs? It doesn't help that, you know, you have... Can I say that? <laughs> it doesn't help when you have, like, Marv Albert and Reggie Miller on the call. You're just like, they just sound, like, so awkward to begin with. So awkward. And, and, depend- and now, now, mind you, Chris Weber is actually supposed to be coming down... Um, Come down here to teach in the AU. Teach at Morehouse, oh, so yep. it's, I'm, I'm gonna see if I can take a class from him. Um, you know what? What are you gonna teach? To... He's just gonna teach how to run out on Actually, the five five. Time out! Time out! Course. Time out! Time out! Yeah, I said that pun intended. Um, now to defend Chris, Chris has actually been a very avid historian within you know Black history. Like he, if you know anything about what he collects, he has got a huge collection of like all these old black artists, artifacts, everything. Like he's actually like, the brother is actually more well-read than you expect when it comes to black history. So don't sleep on Chris. I, I, that's all I'm gonna say. Now I got to defend my fat five, bro. I got to defend even my he won't, five. Even though, he won't make up, even though he won't make up with nobody, but that's okay. That's, okay. that's fine. The only thing I want him to teach at Morehouse, one, false message better be about why he called that timeout. Spring semester better be about why he choked against the Lakers. Oh, <laughs> the whole wow. semester. Oh, wow. a, a summer semester better be about why he thought it was a smart idea to go to Orlando in Detroit to end his career. That's all I want to hear from him. Now, he ain't teaching that. I don't, I don't got nothing to hear from him. Yo, all right, it's just like Shaq, though, man. Shaq's got a degree in everything and wants to be an uh, expert in everything. I want to know why Shaq left Penny in Orlando. I want to know that, huh? I want to know why he went through a table on Wednesday. That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just man. Saying, man. Nobody's oh. perfect, man. Nobody's perfect. But let me, my let me, time let me, out is done. All right. <laughs> let, me, let me give y'all a couple to wrap to wrap up with. Give y'all a quick a quick down real quick. Like, I don't know if you would call it down or up, depending on how, on on your point of view. But um, Harry and Meghan um, on 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 the an interview their interview with Oprah is tonight Sunday, and um, one of the things that came out with was that apparently the royal family was so nervous about them having a uh, kid like how dark the baby would would um would be and you surprised what you know at, after watching the crown don't nothing surprise me now <laughs> yeah because basically because basically it's like they don't they don't do too well with outsiders it's like if you ain't if you ain't part of that tribe they don't they don't fuck with you like that so, but I mean, look how look how they treat the Irish. So, so I mean, <laughs> we they've been doing this shit since Braveheart. They've they been doing this shit since Braveheart. They don't fuck with outsiders. Like, nah, it's, it's us. It's, it's this house right here. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, that um, second uh, like have 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 you guys made enough of a point that Man United bust that ass on City today? Oh. Like, have we Ooh. talked about that enough? Because, because, bruh, like we let it, let it be known. 
Yes, that, man. That ass was smacked. That streak is done. I mean, and they, they do have the league, though. I mean, hey, no, hey. let me ask this first. And I want y'all to be real. When we scored that penalty in the second minute, did y'all have flashbacks against Spurs when we lost 6 1? Did y'all have flashbacks for like a split second? No, I would say not. I had flashbacks against Spurs, but when we scored that early, I was like, we just we just yeah, poked the sleeping giant. I yes. was like, oh, that goal. Hey, bro, was- I was so nervous for like 20 minutes. I was like, hey, <laughs> Pep about to go into overdrive, bro. He about to go Super Saiyan and pull out Pete Messi on us. <laughs> Like it's, it's 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 crazy because I think we talked about it on on our show a couple of weeks back. Like it's really just crazy, like how deep City is. Like they had Foden on the bench. Like like you you just don't have players with that quality. Just like hey, I'm just going to the bench, just chilling. Like 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 it's no like it's no big deal. Like matter of fact, like they had the same thing with the women's team. They had like Roosevelt um on, on the bench. I'm like yo, like y'all are just. You know, y'all just sitting on money on the bench and just because Son, y'all can. They had a Sergio Aguero in street, in street clothes and Bernardo Silva as like the fifth sub. Yeah, like Bernardo Silva, bro. If Bernardo Silva was at United, granted he might be on the bench because we don't like playing good players until it's too <laughs> late. Ah, ah, ah. But he will be playing. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. Um, but uh, uh I'm still gonna say it's. Dean Henderson. <clears throat> yeah, shut up. Shut out. Like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and give him that crown. Go ahead and give him that crown. I'm saying I'm, it. I'm, Amen. I'm, I'm ready to move on from De Gea. I'm so ready. But um, yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, it, it, I feel that with, with goalkeepers, and you're seeing the same thing happen with Liverpool with Allison right now. They get at a certain point, goalkeepers get punch drunk. If they have to do too much within a season, they get punch drunk and it just everything just goes out the window. People I think say, this- oh, the hand's gonna get back on the horse. Uh, he got back on a pony. He didn't get back on the thoroughbred he was on. Um, you know, it's it's hard for me to be sympathetic for Liverpool at times, but you know, you had Allison who just lost his dad not too long ago, uh, like he drowned. Um, yeah, Klopp who just lost his mom. Like I feel like they have like they, eight they've injuries. been they've been. They've been going so hard for like the last like two and a half, three years. It's like, and because like we talk about it in, in our culture chat, it's like, I think they're due for a refresh after the season. Like, yes. And I think that the more, the as many players that can take a break this summer, the better for them. Because I think that just with the last 18 months, just how it's just been crazy for everybody. Um, I think that everybody just needs to like decompress and just be like, I need to do nothing <laughs> and yeah. just chill out. At least but, for uh, like four weeks or something. But yeah, one yeah. thing with, with Liverpool is that, yes, a lot of people say, oh my goodness, like you, you got to look at the fact that they have, they've had injury after injury after injury. You know, Klopp lost his, uh, lost his mother. Um, Allison lost his father. But we are. We need to remember that at the time where Jurgen Klopp was complaining the most about fixture congestion, he was not rotating his team. Yeah, his front three were playing every single game, and you're seeing a lot of the big teams. And I think Manchester City is the only big team that's not doing this that have been doing this. I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna say that we're completely clear from that. Bruno Fernandez has, for the past like three, four weeks, has been looking like a walking dead because he's been playing too much. Like when you look at players like Rashford and Bruno, like they're they're being overplayed, especially with the fact that we have this fixture congestion because of COVID. Um, you see the same thing with Tottenham, with Harry Kane, with with Son. They're getting overplayed. They're gonna burn these players out. And when you reach the end of the season, when it counts, when you need to go for that final push. I don't think a lot of these players are going to have what it takes to give that final push. Their legs are going to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, my last uh, up, uh, like again, I think it's like, meh, but um, <laughs> we, we this week is like we're going to come up on a year from basically when <laughs> damn near the whole world shut down for uh, for COVID. Um, yeah. So much has changed, you know, what I think with our society as a whole, um, globally as well as here in, in um in here in the US. 
Um, but I, I think at the same time, for a lot of people, it's probably brought them together in ways that they probably weren't considering as much um, beforehand. Because like, shit, you could even like take like um, like with our show, like we were we were recording together, you know, all the time. Uh, up, up uh, together up until that point and like like we have we haven't had um a show together yet in, the, in exactly a year like i haven't seen tony face to face in a year and like i, I tried to today because i tried the jersey but then memphis got hangry and memphis got yeah. hangry seriously man that's actually was calling her man i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah man it's uh i think that it's created opportunities in some cases and then hopefully our, our country gets right you know with um with with this recovery of course we're still on pace to where we're actually ahead of schedule to where um we'll all have access to vaccines probably by they just said may so yes. you know, hopefully we're, we're in a, like by hopefully by the end of the summer we're in a space mm-hmm. of where we can actually get back to you know linking up in person and, and, and all that so you know for everybody out there Keep masking up. No matter, like we said last week, no matter what your stupid ass governor says in Texas, keep masking up. Like even after you get your um, your vaccine, just be safe out here because you it doesn't mean that you're impervious, com- completely invincible to the to COVID. So just be smart out here. But um, but yeah, man. Yo, you I, know the I, funny I, thing is, a year ago we were all joking. It was like, oh, ginger ale will cure coronavirus. Yeah, we'll be yeah, fine. Yeah. Now yeah. look at us. Yeah. Coronavirus it's, killing everything. Right, right. We, I mean, back then, like we 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 didn't take it that seriously, and then all of a sudden, there start dropping like flies, and we had a dumbass president who just didn't want to do shit. So we should have known yeah. the year was going to be messed up when Kobe passed away in January. We then that's what I we should have known. Like, right, yeah, something ain't right. Something I mean, ain't right. Kinda, yeah, this, this ain't gonna be a good year, but but you know, uh, it's it's the last stretch, and I think what people need to do is stay the course for the for, you stay the course for a whole year keep, keep it going for the last track hey know? Shadera like we always say on our podcast wear your mask wash your ass that's how you stop <laughs> the Rona <laughs> hey Grego they talking about you on that second one man whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yo I, I'm, I'm over here I'm, I'm about ready to get to give Michigan, some some props, but like say, but then he covered my neck like this, but that's, that's okay. I, I got something for that. But um, <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're glad you know to to hook up with you guys for this uh for this episode. And uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. It was great to have you guys on. You know, crossovers are always great. Well, coach, oh, great. Talk about Dwight York and Andy Cole. Always good to talk about that. Oh, right, right, right. black excellence. It just right. takes me back. It just takes me back talking about those two. I mean. Oh, greatness! That that that's what you call right there, black excellence. It is. It is. Right. <laughs> it is peak. So yeah, man. Where can uh everyone reach out? Would you reach out to you guys? At? Of course, if they don't listen to you, if they listen to us, I'm pretty sure they listen to you. But for the they newbies should. out there, where can yeah. they reach out to you guys? At as always, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at FTC. U T C. And uh, yeah, man, like we're, we're still hanging out and uh, keeping it strong on there. Of course, y'all can get the uh, coach gear. You can also get River City ninety three gear, also at fcutd.myshopify.com. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like I said, we'll we'll be back on here soon, man. But yeah, man. Oh, Grego, should we tell them about the uh, trap house city? Not yet, but Not we yet. we'll okay. be getting there. Be getting there. there. Okay. But, okay. But, okay. It's, it's it's about to be too damn hot for a hoodie, man. Like we gotta get a t shirt for that. <laughs> I mean, I'm with it. Let's do the t-shirt, dude. Well, yeah, man. We, we, well, I said we, we got some good shit. Come, like I said, we, we've been having good shit, like you know, all all year long with the Legends of the Culture hoodies, the Racism Counter um, t-shirt, and you know, we're working on a scarf. Actually, a couple of scarves. So, yeah, like I said, just, just like keep 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 it linked to the culture, and we got you. Well, as always, you can follow our podcast at River City ninety three on Instagram and Twitter. As always, this is your good man, Elliot. I'm Shanir. That's Janir. God dang it, Shanir. That's he your cue. You, no, there's a delay on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what happens when you have to record over the internet. 
Yeah. But as always, guys, we'll holler at you later. Keep us on the good night, guys.